Now we will discuss one of the most important water chemistry parameters, which is water alkalinity. I hope you enjoy this session and we need to understand all together what's the meaning of water alkalinity and what are the types of water alkalinity. So be ready and let's dive in together. What's the meaning of water alkalinity? In the simplest definition of water alkalinity is the acid neutralizing capacity. So how much acid we need to add to that water in order to neutralize the alkaline species are existing in that water. What are the alkaline ions or species in the water? There are mainly three types of ions that form the alkalinity. Carbonate, which is CO3 minus two, bicarbonate, which is HCO3 minus, and hydroxide ion, which is OH minus. These three ions represent the alkalinity in the water. So as much as we have higher concentration of hydroxide, carbonate, and bicarbonate, that means we have higher alkalinity level in that specific water. I hope it's clear. Now, what type of alkalinity we have there? With how many categories or types we have? Simply, we have two types of, of alkalinity could exist in water. The first one, which is the lowest one in general, uh, it's called P-alkalinity, as we can see here. P stands for phenolphthalein, which is the indicator used for to do the analysis of this alkalinity. So simply, P-alkalinity is conducted through measuring the alkalinity using phenolphthalein color indicator, which has an endpoint between almost close to 8.2 or 8.3. So for example, we if we have a water sandal and we added few drops of the indicator phenolphthalein and we start titrating the, the water with acid, for example, sulfuric acid. And once we have a change in the color from pink to colorless, that means we have managed to neutralize all the P alkalinity exists in water. So this is the first type of alkalinity we have it. Generally, this alkalinity takes place when the water pH is more than 8.3. So if the water pH more than 8.3, you can expect to have P alkalinity, but which is a common case. If the water pH between 7 to 8 or less than 7 as well, you have almost, almost zero P alkalinity. So here there's a rule of thumb. P alkalinity is only existed in water where the pH is more than 8.3. Less than that, we can say the results of P alkalinity is almost zero. I hope it's clear. Now the second type of alkalinity, we call it M alkalinity. Here M stands for methyl red color indicator, which is the color indicator we use it when we do the titration of water sample using uh, sulfuric acid or any type of acid in order to neutralize the alkalinity species inside the water. So now we need to differentiate between P alkalinity and M alkalinity. P stands for phenolphthalein, which is alkalinity exists in water of pH more than 8.3 and M alkalinity which is stands for methyl red color indicator which we use it when for all type of water regardless the pH so we need to we can conduct the alkalinity of water regardless of its pH whether it's 6, 7, 8 whatever. Now M alkalinity we call it the total alkalinity because it represents the old species exist in that water. So for example, you have a water with pH 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever, and you add just a few drops of methyl red indicator and you start titrating this water in order to calculate the alkalinity using sulfuric acid and you start adding few, few, few drops. When you have the color change, from, uh, for example, red from yellow to red uh, of your methyl red indicator, that means you manage to neutralize all the alkaline species exist in your water sample and we can calculate then the total alkalinity. I hope now it's clear because this is a very important point we need to highlight it here. Now, let's see here, for example, this we call it alkalinity distribution or in a simplest way, carbonate distribution or carbon distribution in water sample. You can see that we have three species, carbonate here, 
and bicarbonate which is HCO3 and carbonic acid which is carbon dioxide plus H2O you can notice that this is here we have the pH scale from 0 to 14 and we here we have the ratio of that specific ion so for example if we have a water p a water sample with pH of 1 here so you can expect at ph1 we have only carbonic acid here which is uh, co2 uh, uh, dissolved in water we can represent that one as h2co3 so at ph less than 5 here you can see that 100 percent of the carbon exists and or dissolved in water is represented as carbon dioxide and once the ph exceeds 5 you can start that we start getting bicarbonate there so a portion of carbon dioxide or carbonic acid start getting converted to bicarbonate hco3 minus then once we exceed the ph of 8.3 here you can start that we start having carbonate as well in the water in this yellow line here which is co3 minus 2 and you can see also we have almost almost zero percentage of carbonic acid exists in that water so in the acidic part the dominant ion will be uh, carbon ion I mean or carbon for or inside the water is carbonic acid but once we exceed and goes to alkaline side you can find that dominant ions will be bicarbonate and carbonate so as much as the pH increases to high alkaline 13 14 for example you can see that the dominant form of carbon in water is represented by carbonate here Keep that fact in mind because these carbonate um, convergence happens depends on the pH of water. Okay, in the acidic we have carbon dioxide mainly or carbonic acid. In the neutralized samples like drinking water, potable water systems, you can expect to have a little bit of carbonic acid, a little bit of bicarbonate, and sometimes when the pH exceeds 8.3, you can start having carbonate as well, CO3 minus 2. So I hope uh, this graph is clear for you because it's well connected with the water pH. Now, let's see this. Um, what we call alkalinity relationships now always as we discussed and agreed that if the ph less than 8.3 that means we have almost zero p alkalinity there okay so here we can see for example in this case if the p alkalinity equals zero that means the water ph is less than 8.3 that we, do, we don't expect to have hydroxide ion in the water uh, carbonate I mean hydroxide carbonate and we don't expect to have carbonate as well alkalinity in the water and mainly alkalinity comes from the bicarbonate in such cases the alkalinity is represented as M alkalinity which is totally coming from the bicarbonate for example you have drinking water sample where the pH is almost 7 uh, you expect that at pH 7 we don't have p alkalinity so the whole alkalinity will be as M which is the total alkalinity and it's mainly coming from carbon uh, bicarbonate which is HCO3 minus okay in other cases for example if the p alkalinity equals M alkalinity that means you have mainly all the alkalinity in the water coming from the hydroxide ion which is for example if you have a pure distilled water and you have little bit added the caustic soda for example or sodium hydroxide in AOH and you expect in such cases we don't have carbonate and we don't have bicarbonate so mainly alkalinity is coming from the hydroxide ions and there are other cases here you can understand them what if the p alkalinity equals half of the m alkalinity and what if the p alkalinity is less than half of m alkalinity and what if p alkalinity is more than half of the al m alkalinity i mean the total alkalinity and there are many cases here can be discussed in order to know this alkalinity is coming from hydroxide 
bicarbonate or carbonate as well for your information nowadays you don't need to memorize these things just to, you need to understand it in general because most of, most of the softwares calculating for you the alkalinity distribution they can identify that this alkalinity according to the ph to the alkalinity value this alkalinity coming from uh, PL coming from hydroxide, bicarbonate, or carbonate. And also, as well, we have conversion for those calculations in order to know how many BBM of bicarbonate, how many BBM of carbonate, and how many BBM expected of hydroxide ion existed in water. Here we have an example, which is a bit important example, which the same what we discussed before when we talked about the hardness. Alkalinity is dis distributed all over the world in a different ratio, depends on the geographical location and the, on the depth of the water and many other factors. You can see in some parts of the world here, like in this ocean, we can see that alkalinity is a little bit high, but in other parts, like here in blue color, the alkalinity is a little bit lower than the other parts of the world. And mostly in all over the world with the green color, the alkalinity is almost uh, half between 2.345 to 2.4 uh, equivalent per cubic meter we have many uh, ways to represent the alkalinity the most common ways is to represent it as car calcium carbonate so we say that alkalinity is 100 bbm as calcium carbonate okay there are other representations of alkalinity like uh, in, in as we can see here equivalent per cubic meter it's applicable but the most common one is to represent the alkalinity with our p alkalinity m alkalinity as BBM of calcium carbonate CaCO3. It's important now to elaborate more and get more insights about the alkalinity. So there are two videos. I'll just allow you to sh just to see them from the YouTube, and you we can watch together in order to understand the alkalinity in a little bit deeper knowledge. Okay, so the first one will be from Aquaphonics uh, Scientific Incorporation, which is an important video. And the second one from the well-known excellent channel, it's called Crash Course. So they are going to talk about in general water properties and alkalinity as well. Let's enjoy it and see if you enjoyed watching these videos and you get insights about alkalinity. Now we need to go further and further to discuss other parameters related to water chemistry. Trust me, understanding water chemistry is going to help you in any water system, whether it's cooling system, desalination, boiler, drinking water, wastewater, and all other applications. So always, we need to get insights and understanding the depth of water chemistry. By the way, what I'm doing here is just to give you a general understanding of all those parameters but trust me there are many things we can discuss it start from the analysis interferences and how we apply those water chemistry parameters in our day-to-day -day activity so i hope you enjoyed this part and see you in the coming session goodbye